I love everything about this jig. I love the hook. I love the way it catches these fish. It's a large head though. So it does catch largemouth as well. It's not a bad largemouth either, I mean. Yo, it's Smallmouth Crush. The secret's out. I'm sorry. It happens. We're going to talk about it. It's all coming up. It's time to talk about the Beast Coast Open Water Sniper Jig. I've teased. I've talked about it here and there in my past videos. But I want to make a dedicated video to talk about this unique, this special this fish catching machine, this jig right here, the open water sniper jig by Beast Coast. So Beast Coast released this jig a few months back and it's been a hit. I've been throwing it all season, testing it. This was a work in progress, a collab with Beast Coast Fishing and myself to create the ultimate finesse football jig. And this jig was designed to catch all species of bass, whether it be smallmouth, largemouth, and spotted bass. So in this video I want to talk about the open water sniper jig and the different variations that Beast Coast offers and the different applications that I use it, some of the trailers I use, where I would throw this, why I would throw this, and how I would throw it. But before we get into all that, let's rewind. Let's go way back to my early days of fishing and someone who I look up to and respect a lot when it comes to smallmouth fishing Back in Wisconsin, my buddy Paul, I actually stole this idea from him. Well, not steal. I just didn't ask for his permission. We'll put it that way. But he actually designed and came up with and has been throwing the original little finesse football jig that he called the magic bug back in the day. Nobody knew what he was doing. He had this technique, this secret, all to himself for many, many years and dominated the tournament scene with this particular jig. All right, so I fished with Paul today, and somebody caught him pretty good. Travis. <laughs> it was fun, though. Uh, the body of water we fished today isn't known for giants, but, um, you know, 18-pound bag's pretty good here. We caught a couple, a couple three-pounders. wasn't too bad. But I wanted to take a moment here to talk a little bit about the magic bug because this is the creator the original creator of the magic bug you were using the magic bug probably back in early 2000s right yeah late 90s beginning of 2000 is when i came up with the idea so you dominated a lot of the smallmouth fishing on lake winnebago here in wisconsin the reason why you had so much success i think is not only you were dialed into what these fish were doing when nobody else was but you were looking at different options when it comes to bait choices you know everyone was throwing a tube back then right this yeah. magic bug is basically the 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 term you yeah. used yeah nobody knew what you were doing yeah i for just years. right i created this uh primarily cold water pressured fish type situations and i scaled it down quite a bit as you can see, I, I when I make it, I put 13 strands on. Uh -huh. So I keep it real simple, and I put a bug on there. Uh, this one here is uh, a Yomama bug. Right. I get them at Barlow's. Right. I wanted to keep this small, compact, streamlined, because in the cold water, I think the smaller you can get, mm -hmm. and the more compact you can be, the better results you're gonna have so I, I really pared the skirt down didn't put a gaudy bug on there kept things real simple it worked really well uh, not only in the fall in the cold water but I started using it the following spring in the cold water and you know 41 42 degree water that worked really well and Lo and behold, it kept working through the summer, through the summer as well. Right? It does a good job year round, but it was primarily designed for cold water pressured fish type scenarios. 
and it does uh, an outstanding job. Now you're throwing that anywhere you throw a tube. Anywhere cover, you throw rock. a tube. It, it doesn't do good, as you can see, I don't have a weed guard. Right. So it doesn't do good around timber. But rocks, it'll do really good. Weeds, it'll do really good. But basically what I do when I fish this, I would throw it out, let it hit the bottom, and imitate a crawdad. The Beast Coast is very similar. It's a good looking bait. You got a quality hook on it, yep. which is key. Uh, you have to have a quality hook. Yeah, it gets the job done. It's it's very similar. I just got sick of asking you all the time to, yeah. to tie me up a bunch. And now we... Uh, yeah, call me semi-25 <laughs> and right. then I get, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to leave you with some of these to use this season. Okay, and, uh, I'll try them. them. Yeah, That's they're good looking. They're good looking. These are hand tied, huh? Yeah. He does, yeah. he does a nice job. Mm -hmm. So it definitely was pretty cool to be able to go out fishing with Paul that day and talk to him a little bit more about the magic bug and how he used it in the past. Listen, it was really cool to hear the story from Paul, to go out there fishing with him that day, and to see his creation throughout the years. Paul's got thousands of hours throwing a similar finesse football jig. So Paul was a big smallmouth guy throwing these jigs back in the day and when I found out about it Paul and I fished tournaments together and he shared that with me I used it in the beginning very similar to how he was fishing these but I threw a smallie beaver on it and I would catch a lot of largemouth so as much as I love fishing for smallmouth even way back when I was doing well on these inland lakes fishing. with the skirt slightly trimmed and I'm gonna go through all that but I was putting a smallie beaver on and wrecking the largemouth on little rock piles with some scattered grass around it consistently for years and years out there. And this was the bait of choice. It was the magic bug, Paul's magic bug. So Beast Coast has a wide selection of open water sniper jigs. We're gonna to refer to it as the OW sniper jig. But let's talk about the features of this bait. So first you notice the head. The head is stamped with the size, quarter, three eighths, one half ounce. So you'll always know exactly what size it is. I think that's a really nice feature to have that weight stamped in right there. So you notice the head of the OW Sniper Jig is actually a tungsten compound, which is harder than lead, but soft enough to be able to still go through some of that hard terrain, that rocky bottom, where a lot of times you'll be using this type of jig. The hook is perfect for the application. It's a smaller hook, and the hook brand is actually a BKK, which is actually blowing up in popularity it's a superb hook you know we wanted to make sure we had the right size hook with this jig because we're going to be throwing a variety of different soft plastics this jig is really designed to emphasize the trailer that you're going to be using so it's hand tied short cut skirt and so it also has a great little hook keeper on it as well that'll keep your soft plastics snug and tight right on that jig so I'm going to head on over to BeastCoastFishing.com and we're going to take a look at these jigs. And I'd like to walk you through some of the different variations of this jig. All right, so if we look at the first one, this is the Open Water Sniper Football Jig Hybrid. And why is it a hybrid? You can see it has some marabou tied into that jig. Here's the Hybrid Pumpkin. And what's unique about this is it's still that very compact jig but there's just that little bit of marabou that gives it a little extra flash. Now, this will work year round, but especially when you get in some of the colder conditions, whether it be late fall, early spring, that's when you're gonna wanna use that, that jig. So we also have six different colors, Stealth Midnight, and these all come in quarter, three eighths, and half ounce. Dirt Bag, Bruised, the pumpkin elite craw and then the stealth craw and the stealth craw really natural looking crayfish imitating color that i love but you notice that these jigs here on the top they have quite a bit of skirt material to them this is how it comes right out of the package so if we keep scrolling down we're going to run into these mb colors which stand for magic bug so here you have the open water sniper football jig. So you have magic bug pumpkin. We have magic bug melon, magic bug mothman, 
in Magic Bug Sexy Melon. These are my four top color choices when it comes to these types of jigs that I really, really like to use. And of course, your green pumpkins. The melon is a unique color. I throw a lot of soft plastics. A lot of my jig trailers are in that melon color. And so I wanted to pair it up with a jig specifically in the color melon. Black. Black is a huge color for me. And that's why we have the Mothman. So if you look at the bottom right, we have the sexy melon. This jig, this jig is the real deal. This is one of my favorite colors. It's got a little bit of purple in it. It's got your green pumpkin. It's got some black in the in the in the skirt material. It's really the ultimate finesse smallmouth color for a jig, in my opinion. So when it comes out of the package, you'll notice that it still has uh, plenty of strands, but it's actually a little less than most of the football jig strands that are on the market. I take it a step further. I'll actually trim the inside layer of this original jig, and I'm going to trim it down. I just simply take a scissors here. It's real easy. I'll just... I'll just let this part here that I want to keep and I'll just trim along the edges there. And the final product for me is a super compact finesse jig that's going to emphasize the trailer that I use. And there's a variety of different trailers. Now you'll notice it doesn't have a weed guard. And Paul talked about that, his original magic bugs didn't have weed guards either back in the day and i'm really just i'm throwing this the same place i'm gonna throw an exposed hook tube so what does that mean exposed hook tube so here's a here's a typical tube and here's your tube insert and i'm just going to insert that into the tube pop it out there's your line tie so that's an exposed hook tube that is a standard tube that i would be dragging around cover for largemouth, smallmouth, and spotted bass. This is just your typical exposed hook tube. And so anywhere I'm going to throw a tube is exactly where I'm going to throw this jig as well. So, of course, that's going to be hard bottom. That's going to be rock. That's going to be gravel. That's going to be shell beds. But it's also going to be sparse vegetation. You'll easily be able to put a half-ounce jig on and be able to rip that out of grass, vegetation. I throw this in some of the thickest grass you can find, and try to get it right on the edge of it and, and through it. And I'm ripping it out of there. So there's a lot of different ways to fish a tube. And there's a lot of different ways to fish these open water sniper jigs. This is designed to give those fish a different look. Something that they're not used to. A very finesse approach. Emphasizing the jig trailer. I have a couple different jig trailers that I want to go through as some examples. But before we get there, let's talk about some of the ways I'm going to retrieve this. The one thing that blew me away the most was... The way I was able to catch deep smallmouth, and I was really just dropping this bait, sometimes a quarter, sometimes a three-eighth, and sometimes a half, depending on conditions. If I could get away with it, I'd like the lightest jig possible. So I would throw this quarter ounce, and it's going to take a little bit of while to get down, especially if you're in 20, 30 feet of water. But I've been putting a Z-Man TRD on the back of this and just let it fall just like I would a drop shot, but now I'm using this finesse jig and they ate it. See if I can get one to bite. I actually caught a giant on it, but uh, got off. Broke my line actually. So there's one right underneath the boat right here. I'm going to land right on his head. And he is actually going up to it. He sees the bait. He just went down to it, and now he's looking at it. I should be able to catch this fish. Not a lot of movement, but I want to work it a little bit because I know he's staring right at it. There he is. And this is a pig. This is a pig. Oh my gosh. I 
I got boats all over me here. So I didn't even want to be here. I got to free spool it. Oh. So I put a Ned rig on the thing. Quarter ounce. And I'm dropping on these fish in places I would normally throw a drop shot. And I'm literally, I'm catching some studs. Like, this is so cool. All right, now I can get him up. Seven foot medium. Seven foot medium. God. What a beautiful fish, wow. That's an awesome fish right there. Here's how I have it rigged. Okay, I just got a little net on the back and dropped down to this beast. So this sexy melon that I showed really pairs well with the green pumpkin goby. Just because of the purple flake, the gold in it. And here's how I rig it. So I just take the TRD. If you haven't dealt with this type of plastic, it's a lot different than what you might be used to. It takes a little bit of time, but I'll just slowly work that around up onto that hook keeper. You don't get it right the first time. The straighter, the better. That'll work right there. So that's how I throw this quite a bit when I'm dropping straight down on these fish. So I've also caught fish just making a long cast with the TRD and working it back just like you would a Ned. Yoga pants is another great color that I like to throw on my, on my TRDs and that'll pair really well with that Mothman color. And here's the whole deal. I want you to get creative with, with jig trailers and, and different, different styles. But so we talked about dropping straight down, which is a great technique. And I use a spinning rod on that. I'll also cast, I'll make cast around structure. So if I, you have a long tapering point or if you have a shallow flat, I mean, it could, you could be in three feet of water and throw this quarter ounce and, and actually sight fish, look for a cruising smallmouth and be able to pitch that bait over to them and work that back just like you would a two. It's because I pitched to a couple with my swim bait earlier and I couldn't get them to bite. This is a big one. Excuse the mess here. I had a guide trip earlier today and uh, I decided to come back out and I haven't had time to uh, organize the boat. Well, one good thing is the hook is good. Beast Coast, Derek, you did it, Brohim. What a stud. That's a fatty there. Nice fish. So I've also made long casts and just reeled this in straight with a little uh, swim bait on the back. Z-Man makes some great swim baits for this. Kai techs make great swim baits. There's a lot of great swim baits on the market. Just take your favorite one. So like a 2.8 size would be perfect on this jig head. And you're just swimming it, bump and bottom, and just continue swimming. Let that rod load up. So okay. I'm going to show you a quick segment where I've actually uh, did a lot of dragging with these football heads out in deeper water, half ounce, three eighth ounce. And I would use some type of craw trailer a lot of times it's a twin tail grub let me show you that video and break it down because I, I go over quite a bit of what i'm doing with this jig when i am dragging i'm just making a long cast and i'm dragging i'm dragging a half ounce i'm using a spinning rod i have eight pound Cortland braid to a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader and i'm just out here in 30 feet of water and i'm just dragging it over all this chunk rock that's out here. I'm, I'm of course seeing some fish on the graph. I have a twin tail grub on the back. 
and I'm just casting it over the areas that are holding fish and I just drag it. I drag it just like this and I just wait for that fish to come over there and grab it. I don't move the rod. I just keep it right here in this position. You can see the uh, the rod tip here is it's constantly going over rock. Constantly going over good structure where these fish live. And that's the whole key with dragging a football head. You want to be able to get it in the zone. It's really effective when you have a lot of wind and you can't fish other baits properly. That's when it'll come into play as well. But there's a bite. And I set the hook. It's such a fun way to fish. The bite is pretty amazing. He's coming up. He's going down, coming up, going down. You know, doing what smallmouth do. Just gotta let them play. Now here's the deal. A lot of times when you're ticking bottom, you could have a little nick in your line. And so you gotta be a little bit careful when you get them close to the boat. You're always checking. You're always making sure after a fish catch or after you reel it in. Okay, he just thought he was a giant, but he's four pounds. But look at that, he swallowed that. He swallowed that jig. Now that's it, right there. We'll get him back in the water and catch another. Another technique is with a baitcaster, 50 pound Cortland braid, 17 pound leader. And when you get a bite, you just reel that fish in. You yeah, you can just flip them in the boat. And that pinned them real good. There you go. Uh, what we just saw here was with the Baycaster. This is a St. Croix Legend Extreme medium heavy, seven foot. So it's super, super sensitive. It's one of my favorite bait casters in the St. Croix lineup. But a lot of times when you're dragging and that football head's way out there and you get that bite and there's big waves and these fish come up, I feel like having this heavier setup, I still get good bites, I still get the bites, I got the feel, but if I can reel that fish in really fast and keep them coming, I'm not losing as many fish. So I like the Yamamoto twin tail grub on the back of that. Of course, your smallie beaver. You see that green pumpkin copper? That is going to be perfect with that sexy melon. Now also just a straight melon. A twin tail will pair well with that. Cabin Creek spider grubs will work great. I even like the, the Kitek spider grubs to put on the back of that. Some of the, uh, the Strike King Rage Neds will work great as trailers. Baby Rage. I mean, you really... You can't go wrong with that. And experiment, different colors, some orange, green pumpkin, throw that on that. I have some Japanese ones I don't even know the names of, but they, they work great. I bought a bunch just to experiment. I did a lot of experimenting this past summer with this jig. And I literally will always have one tied on. I don't care where I'm fishing. It's going to be tied on. It's that effective. I used them years ago. I got away from it for a number of years. And now I'm back into it hard. And some of the tournaments, the Bass Open, I've done well with this jig last fall up on Lake Ontario. And again, if you're a largemouth guy, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to throw this. You will get bit. You will catch them doing that as well. In fact, I think I mentioned earlier in the video, uh, in some of those inland lakes in Wisconsin, this was my go-to jig back in the day with a trailer for specifically for largemouth that were in that rocky weed edge in that eight to 10 to 15 foot range. So I'm going to use these four colors a lot when it comes to smallmouth fishing. This stealth crawl is extremely intriguing because of the color patterns on that. The bruise, don't be afraid to throw black and blue for smallmouth either. Okay. We all know largemouth love it, but here's the thing. There's not a whole lot of guys throwing black and blue when it comes to smallmouth fishing because they are thinking more natural colors, green pumpkins, watermelons, things like that. Black and blue gets bit, but this is also going to make a great color for those largemouth as well. So Beast Coast came up with this color, and, and Dirtbag here has been a great 
great seller for them. They have a lot of customers that love that color. The Stealth Midnight, of course. And then these hybrid, the hybrid black and hybrid pumpkin, definitely worth uh, giving those a try. But try it with the full skirts. And if you feel like it, trim that inside skirt down and thin it out a little bit. For certain applications, I think you'll really want to experiment with that a little right. bit. So while you're on the Beast Coast website, they got a lot of other great. So these little Magnum compact flipping jigs are awesome too. They got so many great products. I'm really, really impressed. The quality of their products is second to none when it comes to all the different baits. That's kind of funny. I never even noticed that. The magic flick. Oh, I guess I should show you that. This is this is something. If you guys seen Epic Eric, he he put some unique trailers on the back of this as well. Let me show you what you can do with that magic flick when you pair it with the sniper jig. All right, so here's the Beast Coast Magic Flick in Perch. I'm going to show you how you would rig this. So that goes on much easier than the Z-Man plastics. But, but there it is. Check that out. So can you imagine just dragging that real slow off the bottom? I mean, that'll imitate any type of bait fish scooting along, a goby, perch, anything. Really anything. But that is... The perfect color combination. Listen, if you're still watching this, this is a long video. You're into it. You, you feel me. This is the deal when it comes to tricking those finicky fish, whether it be highly pressured fish or fish that are just super clear water, different conditions that you face throughout the season, throughout the different bodies of water across the country. This is going to put some more fish in your boat. We're really proud of this jig. Also, I want to thank Beast Coast for working with me to bring the magic bug to life so that other anglers can enjoy the fish catching abilities of this sneaky little jig. So hey, let me know in the comments what you think about this jig. Also, if you're catching some fish with this jig, tag me. Tag me on social media, uh, Instagram, at Smallmouth Crush. I want to see the pictures. We're going to leave you with our friend Epic Eric doing some damage with the open water sniper jig. And as always, until next time, we'll see you guys on the water. Whoa. He ain't done. He ain't done. Come on in here, you tough. Whoa. Look at the freaking. That's a big one, dude. Nice.